Welcome to this short series of Stuart Beam Engine Restoration. This one is part 5. Machining the top cylinder cover, sorting out the Watts parallel motion and making a new bush for the top of the piston rod. The opening sequence shows the top cylinder cover held by the register, that's the part that goes down into the cylinder, a very small protrusion on the underside. It is currently fitted into the chuck of my small Myford lathe because the ends of the jaws are square, unlike on my larger lathes where the end of the chuck jaws are all chamfered. Even in the Myford's chuck there's not much metal being held by the jaws, and for that reason I'm taking very fine cuts. Bear in mind that the top of the cylinder cover is sloping, and that's why I'm machining it flat, but because it's sloping I'm starting the cut inboard, and that's because if I start the cut at the outside edge, very soon it's going to be removing too much metal and the part will jump out of the chuck. A lot of jobs that I find myself doing, I really sit and think about them before I actually do them, and I still don't always get it right. This was a very delicate operation. The cuts that I'm taking are almost like turning pieces of dust off the metal. Normally, from my experience, the depth of a cylinder cover register is more than sufficient to hold it in a chuck. The whole point of the register is to centralise the cylinder cover on top of the cylinder. This register is far too small, it's only the thickness of a gasket. Believe it or not, on the last pass it fell out of the chuck. Here's the top cylinder cover before I machined it and you can clearly see the slope on it is a real problem with the bolts. Now it looks like this. I couldn't machine around the edges, I just had to use some emery cloth because it was exactly the size of the cylinder as it was. This is a much better arrangement, it's more like the full size, and once the centre part is painted green, it should look very nice. Definitely worth the extra effort, I think. Now it's time to sort out the Watts Parallel Motion. What is Watts Parallel Motion? It's a simple, yet very clever, arrangement of link rods, which allow the piston rod to just go up and down without being influenced by the beam, which is describing an arc. The problem with this link motion is that sometime in the past it's been dismantled and put together in entirely the wrong order. The main clue is that the oil holes drilled in the end of the links need to either be at the top of the link or at the front so you can put some oil in them. During this sequence you should have noticed that I used a pair of pliers to hold the middle part of the main cross pin in place. It's actually been machined from a much larger piece of metal. Using a couple of pieces of 3 16 diameter steel, I'm checking which are the best pairs to fit together, bearing in mind that the oil holes need to be at the top if possible. Only a couple of these links were actually worn, so I used them to fasten onto the front part, rather than have them fastened to the beam. It's time now to make a new phosphor bronze bush for the block at the top of the piston rod, and I found some phosphor bronze, but unfortunately it was square, and this is one of the reasons that I use three lathes. My Smart and Brown lathe is fitted with a very large self-centering four-jaw chuck. I fitted this square piece of phosphor bronze into that chuck first and turned part of it so it was round. Then I could fit it into the three-jaw chuck of my Boxford lathe to complete the operation. In this clip you can really see how differently phosphor bronze turns to brass. The chippings come off in one continuous piece. I could have completed this operation in the Smart and Brown lathe. I didn't do this for two reasons. One is the Smart and Brown tool room lathe that I have is really big and not normally found in a model engineer's workshop. And the other reason is there is insufficient light over the Smart and Brown lathe to make the images clean. After Christmas I will ask my electrician friend to come and fit me some more lighting to illuminate the Smart and Brown lathe. In this clip I'm taking the final cut. This piece of phosphor bronze will now be an interference fit in the quarter of an inch diameter hole in the steel block on top of the piston rod. It's not going to be much good without a hole through the centre, so first of all I centre drill it to make sure the hole's in the middle, and here I'm drilling it using the imperial drill which is one size less than 3 16 of an inch. When drilling phosphor bronze it really needs a lubricant. By the lathe I have an aerosol can which contains cutting lubricant and in the previous clip I squirted some of this at the phosphor bronze, which now makes it much easier to drill. This next part of the operation is sort of an intermission. Whenever metal is hot, particularly phosphor bronze, it expands considerably. 
A lot of beginners, including myself when I first started, find it difficult to machine components to the correct tolerances, particularly if you do not use coolant. Before the next part of the operation, it's time to have an intermission. Sometimes you need to let the parts cool. Once it was cold, I ran the lathe in back gear and fed in a reamer. This is a 3 16 of an inch diameter reamer and it cuts a perfect 3 16 of an inch diameter hole in the centre of the piece. The hole size will be more accurate if you ream at a lower speed. To part off the finished bush, I'm running the lathe at normal speed without the back gear in place. The bush soon falls off into the chip tray. There is a way of stopping this by putting a shaft down the centre, but I wasn't too bothered because my chip tray is currently very clean. I left the bush in the chip tray for a while till it cooled, because parting off generally makes things very warm. Once it was cool enough to touch, I picked up the bush, fitted it back in the chuck and faced the front of it. Then it was over to the workbench to tap the bush into position using a soft hammer. A press would be much better to do this job, or even maybe the bench vise, but the soft hammer does the trick. After cleaning up the part on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper, it's time to find out whether it's the right size. Don't forget that the bush is an interference fit in the block at the top of the piston rod, so as you press it into place or hammer it into place, the hole gets smaller. It's very important to run a reamer through to make sure that the pin isn't a tight fit in there. And I'm pleased to say the fit of the pin and the bush is really good. There's just enough clearance between the bush and the pin to allow the lubricating oil to do its job. And that's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.